The Bloodhound is one of the most ancient dog breeds around. They have a long, rich history, and in today's video, we're going to take a deeper look into this iconic breed's history. Welcome back to the Fenrir Bloodhound Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie, and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you, and then helping you become a high-level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. So, let's jump right in. The Bloodhound is, as we've said, one of the ancient breeds of dog that exists today. Its ancestors first originated from France and can be traced all the way back to the 1300s. It is even said that a Bloodhound appears on a plaque from ancient Babylon dating all the way back to 2000 to 1000 BC. In 55 BC, Romans that arrived in the UK documented scent hounds that sound very similar to bloodhounds. The bloodhounds documented ancestors were hounds bred in 1000 AD by the monks of the St Hubert's Abbey. These bloodhounds were mainly black with accents of fawn or red colours. The monks would send bloodhounds as a gift to the King of France. The Bloodhound was once referred to as the Sleuth Hound and St Hubert Hounds, but their names eventually changed to Bloodhound. The Bloodhound was bred for its scent ability. They were excellent at tracking and hunting large game like deer and wild boar. It was also used to track people. However, the breed nearly died out in France during the French Revolution. In 1066, Bloodhounds were brought across to the UK. It's rumoured that William the Conqueror brought them to England. They were given as gifts to British royalty just as they had been to the French. And their popularity soon rocketed. Bloodhounds were used in medieval times in Scotland to track William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. In the 16th century, they were used to track raiders and cattle thieves. Anyone who refused a bloodhound entry to their land was charged as accomplices to the criminals the dogs were chasing. The breed was first officially used by law enforcement in the UK in 1805. Bloodhounds were brought in to try and help solve the case of Jack the Ripper. Their names, Barnaby and Bugo. They passed all the tests that the London police officers set the dogs, but they were never actually used at the crime scenes because critics mocked the usage of the dogs. Many people now think that Jack the Ripper may have been caught if the police force at the time had used bloodhounds. Hey guys, sorry to quickly interrupt the video. I just wanted to let you know, if you didn't know already, that my first book has come out, is now officially published and ready for you to check out if you are interested. It's called Raising and Training Perfect Puppies, The Missing Secret to Success. I think you'll find it really valuable. And if you'd like to check it out, there will be a link in the description box below. In the 1700s, in America, the breed was also used to track down runaway slaves from farms and plantations that grew cotton, rice and tobacco. During 1888, three bloodhounds were entered for the first time into the Westminster Kennel Club dog show. They stirred up a lot of excitement at the dog show, and this led to them being bred more commonly. In 1910, there were 200 registered bloodhounds in the American Kennel Club. The National Police Bloodhound Association was formed in 1962. This group created training schools to help handlers train their bloodhounds how to track humans. In 1970, the training schools started to test the skills of the dogs. They started to test the bloodhound's scent abilities with frozen and unfrozen material and material that was six months old. This progressed to blood and urine scent trials in 1980. Bloodhounds are still now most commonly used as police dogs, cadaver dogs and in rescue and they are an uncommon breed to come across in daily life unlike other breeds. Well I hope you've enjoyed today's video, if so make sure you hit that like button, get involved down on the comments section below and don't forget if you are new here to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated bloodhound videos coming here every single week so I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Bloodhound Show.